Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and I have eight new shore living DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So the shore living um, items we're going to use are these little fish uh, clothespins. And I'm also going to use some of the shore living greenery, this little coastal pick with this adorable little seahorse on here. I wanted to kind of, I don't know what it's called, maybe a diorama? I wanted to make a little C display inside of a frame. So I picked up one of these little um, frames with the little cactus in it from Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna pop off the back. I just want the frame. It can be anything that's got like the four sides that you can pop the back out of that's gonna sit on its own. Um, I kind of liked the finish of this frame. I thought it looked nice and coastal with the wood. And so I don't have to paint it or anything. And that is gonna be the frame for our little ocean scene. And just making sure it can stand up on its own, and it totally can. I did notice there were some little nails sticking out um, that held the back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of those with a pair of pliers. And we can start decorating this. I'm gonna use some driftwood that I found at the beach trying to pick out some smaller pieces here that will fit inside the frame. Kind of a variety of different kinds, different textures. Um, this one's a little big. I'm just gonna kind of uh, rip that one in half, but I like the feel of it. I think it looks kind of cool. And you know, you could always use any kind of sticks too if you're like not at the beach. Um, just get creative. And I could think that looks kind of cool, all these different kinds of sticks, sizes, shapes. And I wanna paint a couple of them just to provide some contrast. So I'm gonna paint some of the skinnier ones, just a light blue color. I just mix like a Caribbean blue acrylic with some ivory to give me that soft beachy blue. And then I'm gonna kind of wipe off the excess with a baby wipe, which is gonna give me like a light blue stain on that. The reason that I'm gonna paint some of the driftwood is just to provide more color, make it a little bit more colorful, and I'm glad I di it did. It really turned out cute. I thought we could use the driftwood plus the floral pick plus those cute little wood fish to create like a little ocean scene. I originally thought about using that coral over there too from the fairy garden, but I actually did not end up needing it. But you can get creative. You can add seashells, starfish, whatever you've got. Now, I kind of want this piece to be at an angle and it's kind of the perfect size. So I'm just gonna find some connection points where I can glue that down to the top and the bottom and also the side. I was gonna do a video intro today. I've been trying to do those on my new content, but you know, <laughs> your girl has allergies and the pollen is crazy today here in Florida. My eyes, I think, are almost swollen shut. Oh, they hurt so bad, I hate it. So I'm just gonna glue one of the blue ones, like kind of crisscrossing that larger one and gluing it on top, attaching it to the top and the bottom. Then this one, we're just gonna kind of glue that straight from the bottom. That one's gonna kind of stand on its own right there, so I definitely have to give the hot glue some time to set up. I do add a little bit more there in the back just to help reinforce it. And I think that looks pretty sturdy. And then these little blue ones can kind of go up. I'm trying to replicate like kind of like a coral scene. I had a piece of coral that I found at the beach the other day and I was gonna use that in this, but it was way too big. So I need to pick up some smaller coral pieces cause that would be really cute in there as well. Our coral here when it washes ashore is not real pretty, but you can paint it and do some cute stuff with it. And then I'm gonna glue this one to the bottom and the side. Anytime you have like a little knot or something on that, it's gonna give you a little connection point and just letting my hot glue set up on those so that it's nice and sturdy. And I think we have a really good backdrop. We're just gonna leave the back open 
And now it's time to decorate with some sea creatures and some plants. So this has got like several different kinds of greenery on it. The blue seahorse one, this one has like green greenery. I noticed that the white seahorse one has like brown, uh, like a more brownish color. So I kind of wanted the green and this little blue seahorse. So I'm just going to start taking some of this. It looks like seaweed and stuff like that and start finding places to attach it. I'm going to glue it tip to the bottom, but I'm also going to glue some leaves over here on the side and just kind of trim it down too to make it fit. Some of them were a little bit too long and that looks cool kind of going up the side. And this one, I really like th this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use both of those. Kind of this one in front of that log, trimming it down too. I glued it to the bottom. Also gonna glue it to some of the driftwood to make sure it stays, stays upright. And I kind of like these little ones too. They just needed a little trimming and these are pretty lightweight. So I'm just gonna kind of glue that to the front of that driftwood, kind of going off to the side. And this one too. And I think that's about it. I don't think I really need any more greenery in there. It's getting a little full. Now it's time to attach that adorable little seahorse. It's got wires wrapped around its tail. So I'm gonna take advantage of that just by using those to wrap them around a piece of driftwood here and attach that on there. The wire is pretty strong keeping it on there but I am going to like just slightly glue that down so the um, little seahorse kind of stays exactly where it's supposed to. Now the little fish have clothespins on them, which I'm not a big fan on, but you sometimes you can pop them off. I'm popping mine off with a pair of pliers. It is still a little bit challenging to pop them off without breaking them, but they're so cute. I thought two would be really cute of uh, these little fish kind of like swimming like in a little school, I don't really have room for much more. So I'm just gonna glue those to the driftwood, leaving them in that raw wood. I think that looks great against the blue and the browns. And there is our little coastal ocean scene. This turned out so cute and it was so fun to make. And you know, I have so much driftwood, so I really need to do more projects like this. I think it turned out so cute. My son was a big fan of it, as am I. And here is how it turned out. I think I'll add this to my coastal decor. I think, um, you know, my bedroom is a coastal decor, but I don't have it decorated very much. So I think I can add a lot of things to that room as well, because I am drowning in coastal DIYs right now. <laughs> okay, next DIY. Check out these little burlap stretch canvases. These are new. I've only seen them at my largest Dollar Tree and I got a bunch of them and I went there again today and they have them again. And they're so great for coastal. I love burlap. Now it's a five by seven frame. So I thought, you know, I could just buy a frame and this is a new frame as well. They had this at my store with the Mother's Day, but I thought it looked a little bit coastal. It looks like a wood with like a white print on it. And I thought we could just simply frame one of these little shore living sand dollars and see if I can put all of these things together. Um, I don't really like when the little sand dollars are gray and these are left over from last year. Mine last year were a lot more gray than they are this year, but I'm just gonna paint it with a couple coats of ivory just to brighten that up and make it look like sun bleached. What I wanna do is mount that on the burlap. This is a really easy DIY. I wasn't sure though, cause the frame, you know, is not gonna be deep enough for that uh, burlap canvas, but I think we can make it work. So I take the back off and remove the glass out of the five by seven frame. And you can use probably any five by seven frame from Dollar Tree or wherever. And then I'm gonna use my pliers to just pull out the little staples cause those won't work anymore for what we're doing. Then I was wondering if I could just pop like the little burlap canvas in here and look at that, it is a perfect fit. So I think this is gonna work. Pretty cool, huh? Now I noticed that when I put the back on, even though it's like a light color of, um, you know, paper, like wood paper, 
it looks dark. See how that looks darker in the center than it does around the edges? And so I thought I want to use the back because I want something to be able to sit this on a shelf. So I'll just brighten it up a little bit by painting the back cardboard that same ivory color and see if that makes it a little bit brighter. So I just simply paint all over. I didn't really want to make a stand for this if I could reuse that. I also take some ivory and just distress the frame ever so lightly um, and follow that up with a baby wipe. I don't want too much distress, but I just wanted to add that coastal vibe of the frame, which I think it kind of already has. So I think that looks pretty good. We can start putting this thing together. I'm just going to um, try to attach the back to the burlap canvas because um, like the staples wouldn't go around this because the canvas is gonna kind of be sticking out a little bit in the back, which is fine, you won't be able to see it. So I just hot glue that to the back of the canvas and that actually worked out really well. That way I can still use the little um, thing to make it stand up or you could use the hangers on there as well. I think I'm gonna do it sideways. I think that'll look cool. I'm just gonna attach the little sand dollar from the Dollar Tree with some hot glue right there in the center. And I love things like this um, glued onto the burlap. That's when I realized I am gonna have to glue uh, the burlap into the frame. I thought it was gonna kind of stay put, but no such luck. So I just do a small bead of hot glue all around the inside edges and then glue that back down on top of the burlap canvas. And I think it looks really good and this was so easy to put together. Here is our little burlap and sand dollar. Three items from the Dollar Tree, just putting them all together and I think it turned out really cute. And how cool are the little burlap canvases? Have you guys found them in your stores yet? I was so excited to buy them. I bought some more today because, you know, if I don't know, they might be one of those items that is hard to find. They are just in with the regular canvases at my store. Okay, next DIY, this one is so cool. I'm gonna use one of these anchors from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. You can use either this one with the starfish or the one without, they're about the same size. I saw a fantastic wreath on um, Etsy and let me look up the name of that person on Etsy because it was incredible and I had to recreate it. Okay, I found it. It's called Ocean Inspired Design um, on Etsy and I saw it and I had to try to make one with Dollar Tree supplies. So I will post a link to their Etsy shop to the listing down below if you love it too but you don't want to make it, you just want to buy it um, and support that Etsy channel because I loved it and I just had to try to try it myself. So I want to give a huge shout out to them. But definitely check out their Etsy. They have some beautiful stuff. Okay, so what I did was just pop off the little starfish that was on there. It just fell right off. It was so easy. And then I'm using the little bottled shells, the real tiny little cone shells. You know, I thought those were the smallest ones I have. And so we can make this work. I already have a starfish that came on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here in the bottom. And what I want to do is try to encrust this little anchor with shells all over. Now, I was really worried about what type of glue to use. I didn't think hot glue was going to hold up on my front door outside in all of this Florida humidity. So I thought I would try tacky glue. I've had a lot of luck before using the pebbles and stuff like that with a thick layer of this tacky glue from Dollar Tree. And you know I always try to stick with Dollar Tree items, so... We're gonna give it a go. I'll keep you posted. I've already got this hanging on my front door, so hopefully it holds up well. I was trying to think, I kinda wanted to use like some silicone or something like that, but I just didn't have anything and I did not really wanna go to the store. So I'm just gonna start sprinkling those little tiny shells all over. These are so tiny that I don't use this size very often, but I thought it would be great for this because you can just sprinkle it on there. And as you saw, I did a rather thick layer of the tacky glue first and just making sure they're all like pushed down into the tacky glue. And we can keep doing that. Now, it was a little trial and error with this because I've never really encrusted something with shells like this before. Um, like this, so 
I thought we'd give it a go. I'm going to go ahead and do the middle and the other side too, just putting a nice thick layer. The tacky glue works well for me because it's so thick and it dries clear. So I think this is going to work well. So far, so good. So I'm just going to keep sprinkling, just trying to cover most of it. Um, it is that raw wood underneath, so around the edges and stuff, if you're going to be able to see that, I think it's going to be fine. And I thought I wanted to leave the raw wood because I thought the shells would glue better to it um, rather than trying to paint it or stain it or something like that first. And I'm really not doing any kind of a pattern. I am just grabbing the shells from that bottled shells. I like to organize mine in one of those little toy organizers from uh, the Dollar Tree so I can get to them a little bit better. And so I'm just going to keep moving along the anchor, just putting down more tacky glue and sprinkling the shells on. I'm going to go ahead and cover up the holes on the side of the anchor because I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use like the little circle on the top for the hanger, kind of like what they did on Etsy. But I'm going to go ahead and cover that part with shells too, everywhere I can. And it was, this part was actually really easy to do. Now I got to this part and I was thinking I'm probably going to need like more glue, right? So I was thinking, you know, can I put tacky glue on top of this since it dries clear? It did say it dried clear on the package. Now this was kind of a mistake because when I put it on there and start, you know, trying to spread it out with my paintbrush, you can see all of my shells are moving around because I did this before I let it dry. I shouldn't have done that, but I already had it on there. So I kind of had to make it work for that section. But I was like, you know, I need to like let this set up a little bit. So what I did is I dried, I dried it with my like heat gun. And then I actually put it in the freezer to cool it off because it was really hot and it set up really nicely. You can see how much easier it is to glue on top with the tacky glue now that I actually let it dry first. So I just go over all of it with more of the tacky glue. I usually use that spray adhesive, but since this is going on my front door, I really thought I needed to try to pull out the big guns with this. Now, this is the wreath ring that we're gonna use. This is the large 18 inch one from the Dollar Tree. It's not gonna give me that round like you would get from like a pool noodle, which is more like what hers looks like. Hers looks like, you know, an actual foam reform, but they don't have large ones like that from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to try it with this and see if we can make it work. And I'm going to use some Dollar Tree burlap. I love these burlap rolls. If you're not lucky enough to find this one, um, you could also use the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well, or you can get burlap just about anywhere. I used to always get mine at Walmart before I was able to find it at Dollar Tree, but I find it really hit or miss at Dollar Tree. I think people like to wipe it out, but I love it because it has that nice finished edge on it. And I think that just helps keep things look cleaner. So we're just gonna simply wrap this around. This kind of looks like what they did to theirs. And hers looks like a burlap and rope, like life preserver or life buoy. And so that's what we're gonna try to do with this one. And then we can hang that little shell encrusted anchor down in the middle of ours as well. I usually, you know, try to find inspiration for projects. I do not like to copy projects, but when I saw this, I really, really liked it. And I was like, you know, I bet I could do that with Dollar Tree Supply. So I'm just gonna try to dupe it if I can. So that's how far one of the package goes. Goes pretty far, right? So I'm gonna start another package by hot gluing it on to the back and then keep wrapping. And you won't really even know where you started and stop. Just have to let the hot glue dry a little bit there to secure that in place and keep wrapping all the way around. And we have our little burlap reef. So that step's done. That was pretty easy. Now the next step, it looked like they use like white nautical rope um, for like the four parts of the life. I always call them life preservers, life buoys. And so we're going to do uh, something similar. 
I'm gonna use the six foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to wrap that around. So I'm just gonna get it started by taking the tape off the end here. And I'm gonna start by just hot gluing that to the back. I'm gonna start here, cause that's kind of where we started and stopped, just to kind of cover that, seal it all in a little bit and hot glue that to the burlap on the back. And then we can just simply start wrapping this around. This was such a cute design. I've made several of these like life preserver, life buoy um, reefs over the years, um, but I've never made one exactly like this. I really, really like the design. So I'm just wrapping them. I'm just wrapping it. I'm not gluing it or anything like that. I just glued to the end. And then I just trying to feel about how many I want to go. I think eight is going to be really good for the size of mine. I did try 10, which is what it will look like with 10. And I thought that was maybe a little bit too much. So we're going to do with eight. So now I'm just going to cut it here on the back and glue that end down as well. Now, since I am kind of gluing those in place, I do want to get them on there kind of like equal distance from each other. And that pretty much took an entire six foot um, rope from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm going to go ahead and start a new package. So four packages of the white nautical rope to the, do this large wreath and two packages of that Dollar Tree burlap. So I'm just going to go straight across and loop it around eight times, hot gluing it down the ends, trying to like do it in the same exact place that I did it on the other side to try to help with my spacing. And that looks good. We're gonna hot glue that down. And make sure both ends are secure. So now we just need, I've got both sides done there. I just need to do the top and the bottom and we're gonna do it exactly the same way. So about halfway between those, I want this little section to be. And we're just gonna simply hot glue that down and start wrapping this around. Hey guys, I had the craziest thing happen to my channel the other day. I was on Google Images and I searched like coastal something, I don't remember. And I was looking at like Google Images to try to get an idea for something. And one of my profile pictures came up for one of my coastal videos. And it kind of made me smile. I always like it when I see my content in Google, you know, search. And when I looked at it, it did not say YouTube underneath of it. It said Ganjing World, which I guess is kind of like maybe a copycat YouTube. And um, I clicked on it, it took me to a video, which was my video. And it was loaded with a channel called DIY for the Beach, where someone illegally downloaded hundreds of my coastal videos from here on YouTube and uploaded it to their channel, DIY for the beach is what it was called over on Ganjing World. And even my profile pictures and everything. I mean, that's why I detected it because it had my profile picture and I recognized it, right? And I had to go in and copyright strike all of those videos, like hundreds of them. Doesn't that make you mad when somebody steals your stuff and tries to market it as their own? I was so upset, but I did co contact the copyright department there and told them this was a major problem. And within the next day, they took down the channel, they took down all of the videos. So we solved the problem, but holy cow, how crazy is that? So if you see my content out there anywhere and it's not me, be sure to let me know, okay? Okay, so I need to attach the anchor. I just took some twine, tied a knot at the end, and I thought I would just loop it over the knot like that to hang it down inside the a little reef, kind of like that. I wanted to hang it with two strings like that so it would hang even, like dangle down inside, but I kind of want the knot to be hidden back behind the reef. So I think that is going to work. I'm just going to hot glue it back there so it kind of stays in place, right? And then 
It looked like they used rope for their hanger, and I think that would be really cute as well, like the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to try to do that too. So I just like, I measure it out. I kind of make mine a little bit too long, but that's okay. It's better to be too long than too short, right? I'm going to take it and tie it together like that and then reverse the knot. I always forget what this knot is called. It's like used a lot with nautical designs, but you basically reverse it and you tie it on top of each other like that. It provided a nice like little slip knot, but you can kind of tie it whatever way you want. And then I'm going to string that around my anchor so I can kind of loop that around um, and tie it kind of like I tied the anchor on there like that by pulling one under the other, hiding the knot kind of behind the back just like I did before and make a big loop. Now, as you can see, that was probably a little too long. So what I did was I untied it, retied it, cut it off a little bit shorter. And I like that the way that looks better on my door. But basically that is the last step in this DIY. It turned out so cute. I love it. I you know, needed a new wreath for my front door because I had taken down my Easter wreath and it was kind of bare. So this is going to be a great replacement. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out so well. The shells really glued down tightly to that anchor. So hopefully they will stay in place, but I think it's so beautiful. And a shout out again to that Etsy channel, Ocean Inspired Design um, for this beautiful wreath idea. I love it. So pretty. Okay, let's switch it up with an easy one. I wanted to give you guys some ideas of what you could do with these glass stickers from the Shore Living line. And I found a beautiful seahorse. I thought maybe if we use one of these little frames from the Dollar Tree, I picked this one because it had that beautiful turquoise frame and it has glass but no back. So I thought it would be perfect for one of these glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. Now, usually the paint comes off of these with no problem. And so we're gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna display mine on my shelf so I don't really need the hanger on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it to kind of get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna use acetone and nail polish remover and see if we can get that paint off. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And this one was a success. Now there was a lot of paint in there, so I'm trying to remove it without getting it all over the frame, just using a paper towel and taking off all of that paint. It worked perfectly. And now we have a simple little glass frame that it's gonna be perfect for this. I think the colors are gonna work really nicely. That little seahorse is so colorful and pretty. So I'm just gonna use some glass cleaner now to clean this up, get all the fingerprints and everything off of it. And we have a blank canvas. Now the glass stickers are so easy. You don't have to use them on glass, but this time we are going to try it on glass. Basically they're just stickers. This one has like the seahorse, it has a fish, coral, starfish, like bubbles. It's got all kinds of stuff on here. And I kind of like the layout they already have. So I'm gonna kind of do that same layout on here by putting the little seahorse over here on the side and just sticking it to the glass could not be any easier. If you wanted, you could distress this before you put it on there. Um, but this was kind of nice and bright. I didn't think distressing would look great on this, but I'm also gonna move like the little fish, the bubbles, the coral, and this little starfish, and put them all on there to create a beautiful little ocean scene. Now that was easy, right? Now I was thinking, do I wanna do anything else to like maybe take it up a notch? And I decided maybe I wanted a few more little beachy touches right there in front to kind of add to the beauty of those stickers. So I thought we could use some of these little tiny seashells from the glass bottles at the Dollar Tree and maybe do like a variety of them, like on one side of the frame, just to provide another little coastal beachy touch. 
and I'm just kind of laying it out, see what looks good where, and I think that's gonna work. I'm just gonna use a dot of hot glue on each one of those and glue them in place so they don't go anywhere. And again, even with that addition, this was so easy to put together. And a great idea of what you can do with those little glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna have a couple ideas today. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I love seahorses. And this is how it turned out. This would look really pretty hanging in front of a window too because it almost kind of has like a stained glass feel to that seahorse. And a few seashells there on the bottom. Okay, guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I have a link below. I would love to see what you're working on. You guys are so talented and creative. And I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over on any of those platforms. Okay, I told you I love seahorses. So let's do a seahorse DIY. This is one of the wood seahorses from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. Um, you could also do this on the one that is a little bit larger that has like paper and glitter on it. Um, you could probably make that work too. I always like the raw wood if I can start with that. Now we're gonna use some of this lightweight spackle um, from the Dollar Tree. And I wanna kinda cover the wood and kind of make, see if I can make like a cool texture on here with this spackle. I've never really done this before. And once I get it on there, I really wanted to do like kind of a cool pattern to kind of make it look like a seahorse. You know, they have that weird kind of like exoskeleton going on. And I don't really have the tools to do that, but I think it still turned out really cool. So I'm just trying to put a thick layer of the spackle all over, kind of making it look like a little bit more 3D. It's not gonna be super um, thick anywhere, but just trying to give coverage all over that basic like seahorse shape and see what we can do. I've seen um, other crafters like do art with this. And so that kind of gave me the inspiration to try this and see what we could create. And I'm really actually happy with the final project. I think it turns out beautiful. So it's kind of like frosting. Doesn't it kind of look like I have frosted like a giant cookie or <laughs> a cake? It kind of looks like frosting, definitely. And it was a little dry, but not too bad. Once I got that on there, I do go in with a little more. I didn't think it was thick enough to really be able to texture it very much. And so I do use more of that same jar and spread out another coat of our, I guess, frosting, right? <laughs> but my consistency of mine, it was a little dry, but I didn't have to add water to it or anything. But basically, this is what it looks like right now. You can kind of see how much I have on there, like the thickness and stuff like that. Now, I kind of wanted to make rows go down it like a seahorse has. So I'm just using my three fingers because, again, I had no tools for this. <laughs> and I just dragged them down, creating like little channels in the um, spackle while it's still wet. And I'm gonna do it over here too on the belly region, kind of following the shape of the seahorse. Also on the fin, just rubbing three fingers down at a time to try to make little channels to go down it. Now, like if you look at like an exoskeleton, like or the, the, the skin of a seahorse, they have this really cool pattern and it's kind of like almost like a grid pattern. So I'm going to like run my fingers the opposite direction too to try to get that same kind of pattern. And it kind of works. It kind of doesn't. So I go back and do my original channels because I found that some of those were kind of covered up when I went the other way. So this is definitely an experiment but I think it kind of turned out cool. And then I'm gonna go back and just push down like just with my fingertips on those other sections to kind of make like a modeled texture. Kind of all over. 
And let me see if I can show you. See the texture that I put on there? Kind of reminds me a little bit of a seahorse skin. So I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna go in there with my heat gun and give it a good dry. And then we are ready to paint it. It's already that white color, which is great, but I wanted to add different colors to bring out all this beautiful texture. So I'm gonna start with ivory and um, just a brush. And I'm not going for like really good coverage. Any of the areas that are down deep, um, I'm leaving them that white color that they are from the spackle. I'm just trying to get most of it covered with ivory first. It's gonna kind of seal that in, I think, a little bit, make it a little bit less crusty. But I think that looks pretty good. And then I also wanted to bring out a little bit more dimension. So we are gonna distress this a little bit more. Once I get that dry, I'm just gonna go in with some Antique Wax by Waverly and a little chunky brush. And I'm just gonna kind of like dot that all over with a very light dotting distress to try to bring out some more of that texture. In the end, I find it looks really cool. It looks like a kind of like a concrete or like ceramic. It looks really interesting. I was happy with it. Once I got it all on there, I'm just kind of sponging that on with a baby wipe to kind of take off the excess antique wax. And just going back in with ivory, if I think I've went too dark anywhere and kind of distress that with the ivory. So basically we're gonna have the white, we're gonna have the ivory, we're gonna have the antique wax, um, and then kind of came out like kind of a little bit tan. So I'm just dotting ivory back on all over to kind of add a little bit more color And it's really bringing out that texture, I think. So that is, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to also display this on a sign and I will also want to use one of the Shore Living Sand Dollars. And so I, while I have my paint out, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the same finish by painting the little sand dollar with the ivory acrylic first. Give that a quick dry. And then I'm gonna go in and distress it the same exact way I did with the Antique Wax by Waverly, just by dotting it all over to give it that same texture. That way they will look very coordinated together. So I'm gonna go back with some ivory after I do the Antique Wax, just to brighten it up a little bit and just sponge out with a baby wipe as well. And I think that turned out so cool. I love that finish. So now that I have both of those done, I want to display them on a Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to use this like medium wood color one. These are kind of new at the Dollar Tree. They have like the slatted wood. I think they look really pretty. And I think that ivory is going to look really good against the wood. But you could use any of the Longshore Living signs as well. I just really wanted this wood finish. I really want to go with like a neutral color scheme on this one. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hanger. Um, don't really like how they attach their hangers. I like to tie mine on the front. I find they hang a little flatter. So I'm just gonna go in there and cut off another piece of twine, Dollar Tree twine. I am going to hot glue the tips to make them easy to thread through the holes, come from behind and just tie a knot in the front, which that's how I like them. I'm just gonna burn off the fuzzies too to clean that up a little bit and do the same thing here on the other side. Now I wanna also use that twine on the bottom since this is kind of a long sign. Um, I do have, it's plenty of room to do like a little jute twine wrapping here at the bottom. And I like to do that with long signs. I think that looks really pretty. So I just hot glue the twine to the back and just kind of wrap that around until I'm happy with it, kind of crossing um, through it a couple times too, just to finish off the bottom of the sign and then hot gluing that to the back and trimming that down. Now it's just a, basically all I have to do is attach the seahorse and the sand dollar to this. This was so fun to make and I just love how it turned out. It's definitely unique. 
I thought the sand dollar would look good on top and then that beautiful seahorse that we made. I love that. I might have to give that a go. I might have to get some tools though so I can kind of make a texture like I wanted to, but I think this works. So I put hot glue all over the back of our little wood seahorse and then just kind of center that on my sign. It's okay if his nose veers off a little bit and glue that down. And then I just need to glue down the little sand dollar as well. Center that at the top of my side. I'm not gonna add any words or anything to this. I think the silhouette of the seahorse is beautiful on its own with that beautiful texture. I did wanna add a little decor down here to the bottom though, the twine. And I have some of these little tiny starfish. I buy these on Amazon. I always have these listed in my um, Amazon shop, which is listed below. Um, sometimes you can get some bigger ones that come with the small ones. They're all in one package usually. Um, the tiny ones and the size, but I'm gonna pick out three of the kind of bigger ones and just hot glue those on there. If you don't have those, you could always do seashells or whatever you've got, something a little in the smaller size for that. But the color works perfectly for how we painted the little sand dollar and the seahorse. And this is how it turned out. Hopefully you can see that beautiful texture on there. It looks so cool. I love it. And another fun little decorating idea we have here. Okay, another glass sticker DIY. We're gonna do another easy one. I'm gonna do the dolphins and one of these little galvanized metal signs from the Dollar Tree. Now, I've used these before with some kind of a decal or glass sticker. And I was able to take the paint off of the front where I see where it says shine bright like a diamond. I'm pretty sure, but when I went in there with fingernail polish remover and my paper towel, I got nothing. So I don't know if I'm remembering wrong or if this is one of the ones that doesn't come off easily, but I didn't want to scratch it up or anything with a razor. And so, you know, the back is plain. So, hey, we'll just go with the back because that's what I want it to look like. The frame like kind of looks the same on the front and the back. You're just gonna miss the rivets if you use the back, which is fine, don't really need those anyway. And then this is the two dolphins jumping out of the ocean. This is another one of the new glass stickers from the Shore Living line this year. And I think it's gonna fit in this little sign perfectly. And glass stickers on galvanized metal from the Dollar Tree is always a great idea um, because it can be challenging to decorate or to paint but these just stick right on just like a giant sticker. So we're just gonna lay our little dolphins on there and press that down. Can't get any easier than that DIY, right? I think it looks really pretty. The only thing I'm not digging is that it has that writing on the back. And if I wanna use this like on a tear tray or something like that, you might be able to see the back. So I'm gonna just kind of finish it real quick um, just so you can't see that anymore. But I think the dolphins on the metal look really pretty. So to cover that up, yeah, I told you it was bothering me. I'm just gonna use some contact paper from the Dollar Tree and kind of the wood grain, totally doesn't matter. I'm just gonna cut a strip of that. That's gonna be large enough to cover those words and just kind of finish my back a little bit just to make me happier with this. And I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I'm just gonna cover where there's writing because it has those rivets and stuff sticking out. So just something to make it look a little bit better on the back and just peel and stick that down. And that made me happier with the finish back on this DIY, but this was so easy to do. So another little glass sticker idea for those cute little shore living glass stickers. I'm totally loving the dolphins. I think this is so pretty. And this frame looks really nice too with that wood grain. And this is how it turned out, our little galvanized metal sign with dolphins jumping up, a beautiful glass sticker design. And I didn't add any shells or anything to that one. I didn't think it really needed it. 
Okay, the next DIY, I got one of these little round signs from the Dollar Tree um, to be the base for this for a couple short living items, but this one was not glued down properly. I didn't notice it when I bought it, but I'm gonna show you how you can fix it if this happens to you. I mean, it was rather noticeable. Now, getting it like unglued enough to get my spatula under there was challenging, but I'm just using my heat gun and I was eventually able to get it under there. I'm not gonna go all the way because it was so difficult to do that. Um, I'm just gonna go part of the way where I can glue that down where it should be. Originally, I kinda wanted to go all the way around and take all of the frames off and glue that on top of the canvas that I'm gonna add to it. But since it was so hard to get even that little part up, we're just gonna repair it and leave it in place. So I'm just gonna glue that back down with some hot glue, stretching it out where it will be on the edge and not where it was before. You gotta look for those things. Those um, frames on those signs are really cute, but sometimes I've noticed it on the square ones too. They're not always perfect. So I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. There is a little bit of a crack in there now. So I do put a little spackle in there to fill that up a little bit. The other thing I didn't really like about the sign was that the edges were kind of unfinished and painted kind of crazily. So I'm just gonna go in there and take a makeup sponge and some ivory acrylic and we're just gonna touch that up all the way around the edges just to kind of give this a more finished vibe. And what I wanna do is add an ocean scene to this and one of those octopus yard stakes to give you an idea of something you can make with the beautiful yard stakes from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. I also painted the front and the wood beads on the hanger with that ivory. And I think that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna cover up the wood part on there. I want to use one of the Shore Living canvases and I think we can just cut it to size. I'm just sanding around the inside of the frame because there was like a little bit of splinters happening on there just to smooth it all out. This is the ocean scene I'm gonna use. They have several different ones, but I think this one's gonna work out well. And I am just gonna remove the canvas from this. I always like to save those sawtooth hangers because those are great. You can just nail that into another project you might have. And then using a razor blade, I'm gonna cut um, on the outside of the staples to try to pop that canvas off. You do have to cut a couple times on the corners cause they are kind of like folded there and get that disconnected. I think I usually, you know, cover square frames with canvases from the Dollar Tree, but I thought we would give a round one to try and see how it turns out. And I think it turned out really cool. So I wanna cover just the back of it with that. I'm leaving the frame in place. So I just sit it on there upside down where I want it to go. And then feeling with a pen, I just draw around right up against the inside of the frame. So I'll know how to cut this out. And I'm going for like a coastal farmhouse vibe on this. So if it's not perfectly to the edges, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I know some people go in there with some twine or rope to kind of um, glue in between and you could totally do that as well, but I think we can make this work. I think that looks pretty good, so let's Mod Podge it down. I am gonna do a rather thick layer of Mod Podge because we are gluing down that heavy canvas and I want it to stay in place. So once I get one coat on there, I do go on there with another coat to make sure it's nice and thick. And then we're gonna just lay that on top of the Mod Podge, gluing that to the sign, which is a perfect little ocean background for that octopus. I'm just using like a baby wipe to kind of push that down, spread out some of the excess glue that might be seeping out around the edges. And I'm kind of okay with the, like the edges that don't really have any canvas. I think it's gonna make it look a little bit more rustic. Now using my razor blade, I'm going to cut the canvas. Um, you kind of have to feel where the groove is. Um, there was three grooves on this one for three boards. I'm only gonna do two, um, just to kind of make it look like slatted boards. And so I'm just trying to find that groove and I found like a little Cricut weeder was the best way to kind of find that, kind of mark it, so I'll know where to cut it. 
And then I'm just cutting it with my razor blade straight across. I'm gonna skip like the center one and then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the one on the top. Just trying to find it, creasing that down a little bit with my Cricut um, weeder. And I'm doing this while it's still wet so that I can move the canvas if I need to. Once I get like them cut into three pieces, I can kind of slide it like that up and expose that area in between the boards. And I think that looks really cool. Just trying to get that on there even. And spread that out. See how it looks like three boards with like painted um, with that beautiful ocean scene. I thought that would just give it like more of a rustic touch. Just make sure you cut in the right place there. <laughs> I did way better on the top than I did on the bottom. Just making sure all of it's glued down and then I'm gonna go over the top of all of it with more Mod Podge to help seal that down. Now normally I would distress that a little bit um, but I really liked the scene of the ocean on there, so I think I'm going to leave it as is. Now, this is the little octopus, the yard stake that I thought would be fun to make a little sign out of. Now, normally these yard stakes are super easy to pull off, right? The little metal yard stakes um, with a little pliers, a little elbow grease. This one is attached kind of weird because it's attached to the octopus. It's also attached to one of the tentacles. And I just keep bending it back and forth, um, but it really did not want to go because it was still stuck to one of those tentacles. And I was trying really hard not to rip the, I, the tentacle off. So it fought me a little bit, but I just kept working at it until I got it off. And sorry about that. My camera died there for a second. But basically all you missed is I did get it off. <laughs> <laughs> and I started painting it with a combination of ivory acrylic with antique wax by Waverly because I wanted to kind of have like a wood background to what we're going to do on it. Um, and I didn't really like the way it was painted or the colors on there. I thought we could make it look a little bit better. So I painted that that tan color. And then most octopuses are, I, I like orange octopuses, right? But I don't want it to be like bright orange. I think that's gonna be too colorful. So I'm gonna use just a chunky brush and some orange acrylic. I think this is like a pumpkin color. And I'm just gonna distress it. Cause I wanna bring out like all of the texture on the little tentacles of the octopus, his little tube feet, his little eyes and stuff like that. And I definitely want him to have orange but I just don't want it to be bright orange. I thought that was just gonna be too much. So that brown color we did first just was a great undertone, I think, to that. And I just keep lightly dry brushing that all over until I like the way he looks. I did kind of mangle that middle tentacle there when I tried to get it off, but that's okay. It'll add to his character, right? And then I was thinking, do I want it in the center? Do I want it flat? Or do I want it to stick out a little bit more 3D? It is metal. So I just need to find a way to attach it now to the canvas and sign. I thought maybe if I had the tentacles going off the frame a little bit like that, that would look really cute. And that's what I ended up doing was kind of just doing it to one side, kind of overlapping the frame for fun. But now I'm gonna need something to kind of fill the space. Um, in between and kind of make it stick out a little bit. So we're just going to use one of those little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and glue that on the back of our octopus. And you're going to want to use lots of hot glue for that gluing to hot gluing to metal is not always ideal, but you can make it work. And then I'm going to use hot glue to glue that to our canvas. And I think this is really whimsical and sweet. We have a little octopus at the ocean. I think it looks really cute. Now I decided I wanted that hanger, the little wood beads to have a little bit more color. So I'm gonna distress it with just like a Caribbean blue color. Just kind of modeling that all over the wood beads, just leaving them attached. And it just kind of looks like they were blue at one time and they're all distressed now. And a lot of the paint has come off, but that was kind of the vibe I was going with. Just kind of wiping those with a baby wipe, just to provide a little color to the hanger. 
to kind of match that beautiful canvas. And here it is, our little octopus wall hanging. We use the octopus metal yard stake from the Shore Living line and one of the Shore Living canvases so you can get a great idea of what you can use those canvases for. I really think he's cute. I love an octopus. Okay, here's some more glass stickers and another idea of what you can do those with those with the Shore Living line. Now, my Dollar Trees just got these pots and I think they're so pretty. I don't think they're Shore Living line, but the color kind of reminded me of something I would like with my coastal decor. So I thought we could make it really colorful and fun by adding some of these glass stickers from the Shore Living line. These are very colorful. And I thought that would be a nice contrast against that like mint green color of the metal pot. It's also got a great texture on there. And we're just gonna layer that up with these little coral stickers. Now it is, you know, a rather big pot. So I didn't think one package was gonna be enough. So we're gonna use two packages and kind of just space these out, just peeling and sticking. Now, the only thing I was concerned about here was whether they were gonna stay put with that texture on there. Um, and so I do end up having to seal them down a little bit because I want this to be able to hold up if I wanna use this inside or outside. Now there was like little starfish bubbles, little coral pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and use those as well, why not? I ended up using almost all of the two packages because I have them fairly close together, just kind of alternating the different pieces of coral. And I end up using all but one. And I am gonna use some of the tiny pieces again to kind of fill up some of the open spaces up top. And I think this is really colorful and fun. This would be, I think, so pretty with some colorful flowers for spring. I don't have any yet, but I'll show you what I end up doing with it to start with anyway. And so I'm gonna make sure they're all kind of pushed down as good as I can get them. And then I'm gonna go over it with Matte Mod Podge. I'm using the Matte Mod Podge because the pot itself was really glossy and all of the glass stickers were really glossy too. So I kind of wanted to tone that down a little bit with that matte finish. And I also wanna make sure that these are all sealed down and they're not just going to peel off or you know start coming up. So I go all the way around with that, sealing that down with Mod Podge. And I think this color on this pot is so pretty, I love it. Once I get that on and dry, I go in with another coat, just kind of all over. Cause again, I wanna make sure that they are gonna stay down. Super speed mode on that. And I think that's gonna work. So I gave it a good dry and you can see it's not near as shiny as it was before compared to like the inside of the pot. This is what I'm gonna put in there. This is just a boxwood plant that I have from Target. These are their little $5 plants, but they go on sale too, you have to watch that. Sometimes you can get them for like $3.75 and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna use some of the Shore Living Coastal Picks. I'm gonna use two of the like bluish green seahorse ones and then two of like the long cone shell ones. The reason I paired these together is because they're both green. I noticed that the other seahorse and the other shell one are more brown with their greenery. And I didn't really want any brown with this project. So I think this boxwood plant is gonna fit nicely inside the pot. It's a nice big size. I'm gonna leave it in the pot, they're kind of permanent, but you can't really add greenery to it. Whatever they use for foam is like, they kind of glue that down in there at Target. And so there's enough room around the pot just to add my little picks on the outside of the pot, which is gonna make it easier if I wanna switch this up and add some flowers in there. And then I could use the coastal picks in the colorful flowers. So just taking all the stickers off of those, I thought we'd just alternate like a seahorse on each side like that and then the little shells on the opposite sides here, alternating them as well. Just kind of mixing all of that greenery and seaweed in with the boxwood, just to make it look a little bit more coastal and fun. 
And then to cover up the pot and stuff, I don't want you to be able to see this, I'm gonna use some red moss. I actually got this at Goodwill. It says it's Halloween decoration, but when I saw it, I had to get it because it's just like, um, you know, like reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, but it's red. So I thought that might be a little bit more colorful, but you could totally use whatever you have to kind of fill in. I'm just going around just the rim of the pot, anywhere that you might be able to see that pot from the Target plant. And I'm probably gonna switch this out for flowers because I think it would be way prettier um, with colorful flowers in there to match all those colorful coral pieces on the outside of the pot. But this is how it looks for now. And just another idea of what you can do with those glass stickers from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And those beautiful picks. I love those picks from the Shore Living line. The seahorse, of course, is my favorite, but this is how it looks with the Target plant inside. And I really love the colors. I think this is gonna be really pretty outside. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about memberships. Um, for $4.99 a month, you can get early access to my videos. You're gonna get shout outs and other perks. And I wanna give a big thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bombs, Coastal Couple, I Am Mojo Jojo, Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, and Sally Cooper for being members of Crafty Beach and helping to support my channel. It's gonna, it's helping me pump these videos out and I really appreciate you. Okay guys, it's time for the final reveal. And I wanna know your all's thoughts about our little sea turtle friend. I've been sneaking him into a few videos and I wanna see if you guys like him. I thought we maybe needed a mascot here at Crafty Beach. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite shore living DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We just hit 15,000 subscribers. Just keep
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.